Hello, Battle Right fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, and once again, we're back with replay casts and more casts, more replays from Skybrush, because he gave me a bunch of replays, or they gave me a bunch of replays last week, and so we're going to be continuing with that. I mean, their games were quite good, and we still have players who are you know, grade 12. Good grade. So we have. Skybrush as Varish with Mass Grade as sorry, Skybrush has Sirius with Mass Grade as Varish against Manitar as Older and Mino as Taya. Already starting out with the standard setup. And Skybrush very quickly engaged and getting pushed away by Mino. Nice wind strike there to get him out of the way. Trying to lunar strike, but red team being very careful to avoid that. Blue team has a nice control of the center, and Mino taken out of position. Ma Manitar is trying to help, but Mino took a lot of damage there. The red team got the center orb though, so that helped heal, but once again, Mino having to get out of there, being focused down hard. And we see Masquerade just staying to the outside, not worried too much about destroying too much, but at the same time, we do have a fair amount of focus going down on Man well, Masquerade as well. Now, bit of a 1v1, double 1v1 situation. Mino really getting out ahead. And another red team orb. That is. Pushing blue team right out of the center, and wow, that turned around fast. That turned around very fast. Let's just double check what happened to the older and down in the south, because I missed that. So right down to the south, I mean, we have older and Varish get I mean, should say Manitar and Masquerade going to the bottom, and yeah, Manitar just getting in there, throwing in a handful of shots, never really getting hit. Masquerade's always just out of range. Good hand of judgment there, but still, Masquerade's been always out of range. Manitar just able to control that space that much better. So at this point, Red Team with solid control of the center, although granted, they have gotten every single orb thus, or every single rune, I should say, thus far, which is exactly what you want to do. In general, whoever gets the rune, they typically win. Not always, but it's a lot easier to win when you get the rune. However, at this point, Mino goes down first, good kill by Skybrush, and Manitar gets the rune again, but Older's ultimate, it's not bad, but it is one of those things that's more of a combo set than anything else. So Older once again able to get the ultimate. I'm what I'm kind of surprised is that Manitar. Excuse me, Manitar. I'm sorry about the use of the character names. Anyway, I'm surprised about Manitar's play though because Older has really good EX. The really good EX moves, meaning throw out Sands of Time, and then EX Sands of Time just consumes it, deals a bunch of damage. The ultimate's a good combo setup, but without a teammate, it's considerably more limited. And now the 2v1 going on here, time pinnering out the Hand of Corruption, but unfortunately that's not enough. Nowhere near enough damage in Skybrush with the Astral Beam for the win. But yeah, that's the one thing about Older, is that Older's EX moves, especially, I mean, I would say Chrono Flux is okay in this situation, but really, it's San the Sands of Time combo, the amount of damage you can deal with that, and especially with the splash damage you can deal, that that allows Older to really work well. I mean, granted, some good quicksands are going down, but it's just... Considering the amount of ultimates that were used, the amount of meter, like, that was 8-ish meter that was used to set up a couple of combos that dealt maybe 20 damage. Especially when you take into real, account real health. Anyway, second game, and counter gets triggered for Skybrush. Another... Not bad. Uh, the X-Strike got hit by the wall. That's a bit of a problem, and red team still out of the center. Blue team once again has that center. Good wind bomb. Ooh, nice try at the wind bomb X-Strike combo. A little bit of a range misjudgment there, but still not bad. And nice dodge with the Lunar Strike. Manitar keeping the healing going up, and red team once again taking that center orb. I mean, they kind of have the advantage on that, having two ranged based heroes. That really helps. Dodging out the Lunar Strike, though, but at this point, Red Team with control of the center. The orb should be up in just a couple seconds, and the rune just getting resummoned again. Blue Team's going to take that, but now Skybrush out in the middle. However, getting stunned right outside the wall, so one on two. Mino's still doing a nice job there, and very, very nice Celestial Split, getting away from the X-Strike. Good Astral Beam to get weaken Mino enough to get Mino out of combat. Still, Red Team does have the control of the center. That is super important. They've still gotten every single center orb. Now, granted, blue team won in spite of that. But that's... Last game at this point. I mean, granted, blue team did actually take more damage last game. And blue team taking that center orb. Their first center orb, or should say they first ruined their entire game. But, man. Masquerade inside of a 1v2 situation they do not want to be in. And about to go down 
couple more boomerangs. Good Wuju there. But still, really having a hard time. Mino, however, getting taken out by Skybrush's Astral Beam, which is perfect. And a Luna Strike to petrify and get that center orb once again. Skybrush and Masquerade pulling that back in. Masquerade, a little unfortunate that they pushed forward as much as they did. And a nice stun there. However, that probably won't be a kill. And no, will not be a kill. But yeah, it kind of sucks for Masquerade. They pushed forward so much. I mean, the thing with Mino is they just... They had a decent approach for a while. It's just really those Astral Beams are the only things that really dealt damage. It's like... That first Astral Beam right here, where it's just... They were walking out of the way, but what could they do? They were not in the best position. And then near the end of their life, where it's a little, uh, little late. But yeah, so it's just... They have their ultimates set up. They have... They should have haste by that point. Oh, they already just used it. That's why, yeah. So, really, that was mainly Astral Beams in that Taya. Got a bit too close to Skybrush. And just... When I mean, those Astral Beams are on the table, there's only so much you can do. You really have to be careful about that. Granted, Skybrush can only move so much, but having used her, having used her ultimate, Mino had no way of tornadoing out of there. That was that was it. The ultimate was done. The meter was, was expended. There was no tornado, thus no escape. That's pretty much Taya's only real escape. Granted, haste isn't bad, but it's not like invulnerable, get me out of here escape on the level of basically any kind of jumping escapes. It's kind of level of, in this case, Shifting Sands or Celestial Split. Speaking of which, another approach by Skybrush, another push back by Windstrike. And getting that, finally landing that Lunar Strike, it won't really amount to much. Red Team not really heavily damaged, and Skybrush right in the middle of a 1v2. Good counter, but still in the middle of a 1v2 situation. And that X-Strike Wind Bomb combo finally works out. But another Lunar Strike Petrify and a steal. Nice Center Orb steal by Mino. And now... Petrification coming in from, well, against Varish here. But, but in both cases, Blue Team is just out of the center. Blue Team trying to get back in, but Skybrush in another 1v2 situation. Getting pretty much all the crowd control against them. Masquerade finally pulling in here. Good Wuju, but once again, Blue Team split up. And now we're in a double 1v1 situation. Skybrush probably going to throw out that Astral Beam as soon as the Petrify is over. Or maybe not. Ooh, good call on the counter there from Mino. And over to the north, essentially back to 1v2. Skybrush taking most of the heat here. I mean, Masquerade doing a bit, helping out, just reducing that damage, which is kind of what Masquerade is, they're supposed to do. Varus, that's pretty much their game. Unfortunately, getting hit by the X-Strike, taking a lot of damage as a result. But a good, good hand of judgment. Bit of an ineffective counter, but even then, blue team still managing. Ooh, nice Luna Strike. So a small 2v1 against Manitar, who is very weak right now. I noticed that Masquerade doesn't seem to shatter a whole lot after doing Corruption or Judgment. It seems to be shatters, like, kind of empty shatters. I don't think... Yeah, I think it's just shatter. I don't think it's EX shatter. Really, it's a matter of speed. And ultimate coming out there from Masquerade, finishing off Mino once again. And this seems to typically happen. Mino seems to be just doing a decent amount of damage, and then it's just that one ultimate and they don't have a tornado available actually they did have a tornado available they had lots of energy but that was a reaction thing that I imagine that's kind of tough that one worked out really well Masquerade was really put on the corruptions I mean you had well decent amount of corruptions I mean despite red team losing control of the center or gaining control of the center yeah oh double okay yes double ultimate would be the main reason why that why Mino died. The real focus there. Manitar not really dealing a whole lot of damage, but like I said, Manitar not using their EX moves. They were pretty much entirely focused on building up to ultimate, and that's it. Which is a little unfortunate, because older with their EX moves is very scary. Anyway, the next game will be, once again... Same one, this time on the temple, on Ormond Temple, that's what it's called. This one will be Wintry and Skybrush. Wintry as Ashka and Skybrush once again as Sirius. Against Zyda as Skybrush and Nuero as Freya. So where last game we had Skybrush 
with a... Well, okay, it was Scavish and Varish, so very, very out of the way. Miscavish jumped in, Varish kind of threw in support fire, kept damage down because of corruption. Didn't notice a whole lot of inhibitors guards from, from Masquerade, though. And in this case, it's going to be much more forward because their opponents are not trying to stay out of the way. I mean, Nuero is going to be rushing right in, maybe staying at mid-range, throwing hammers. No, not going for Twin Hammer. Going for Torrent instead. Okay, so no, in indeed, Nuero is probably going to be very forward. So at this point, it's going to be much more of a melee. And right off the bat, Skyber Celestial splitting into the combat, getting into not quite a double 1v1. Almost, but at this point, blue team is trying to stick together. Zyda getting out of position, but at this point, I feel like Skybrush is in a bit more trouble. Getting their healing out of the way, and nice counter to be wanting Zyda very briefly. Zyda getting out of there, getting close to Nuero, and red team takes the center orb. Getting a bit of crowd control, but at this point, man, both cases of the Ashkas are just getting 2v1 if possible. Very brief 2v1s, but still. And in this case, it's working out far better for the blue team. Zyda about to go down, one good shot. Pretty much, and there it is. There's that good shot. Wow, nice use of EX moves there. Skybrush has really started to use that. They haven't been using the Celestial Rift as much, EX or EX Celestial Split, but they are definitely using their EX. Oh, that one right there, the EX, EX Celestial Strike, because that is awesome. 24 damage at range for a melee hero, especially for one with as few mobility options as Sirius. That is extremely handy. I mean, we're seeing that thrown out all the time. Celestial Spit, in, nice, into a charged Celestial Strike, which is actually not that ideal, given that at this point, Nuero is doing a great job with their shields. Keeping their shields up, they're keeping themselves from getting too much damage. Good counter, wow, that was wonderful as a counter. And of course, they have Thunderclap Shield as well, so I expect, I mean, Nuero went down there, but I'm expecting Nuero is going to go largely for shielding battle rights. They might go for extra damage on static opponents, because if they're Thunderclapping a lot, they're going to get a lot of statics, they can throw out... Get yeah, the 20 damage, that's really good. I don't know if they're going to do that. They can kind of go either way on that. And Skybrush, of course, going for Celestial Split Blinding. And Wintry going, of course, for Searing Flight Shielding, because... I mean, Searing Flight Shielding in particular, that's what you do with Ashka. And Zayda going for the same thing. And Nuero going for more shields. Getting shields for their teammates as well, which is definitely useful, because Zyda has been getting a lot of damage, take, getting focused down a lot. And we see right now, Celestial Split right into Zyda. And both, both the blue team going for Zyda, and Nuero tried to stop it, but got Luna striked out of there. And it looks like, yeah, once again, actually no, Skybrush getting sent, getting completely focused down. And nice incapacitate too, good setup, good escape from Nuero getting out of that Luna strike. That would have been a bit problematic, would have allowed Skybrush to escape. But blue team getting that, that rune, so Skybrush still getting some health back. However, Skybrush in a 1v2 situation, Ooh. I mean, no matter good shielding, they're good as... Well, not even escape, just good shielding. That's what they needed to do. Not bad use of ultimate. I mean, Freya's ultimates are okay. They're not must-use. Overall, she's, you know, easier meter kind of situation with Freya, I find. But Skybrush going down, and it looks like Zyda might be going down very soon after. There it is. But Nuero, it's Nuero's match to lose right now, especially with their great use of shields. Ooh, nice try hitting with the ultimate, not quite managing it, but... Actually, it's a bit of a bad use of meter, but still, it should work out. One more... Ooh. I think it's Thunderclap. Thunderclap into Hammer. No, actually, never mind. They don't have the bonus damage battle right, so they just want to hit Hammers. Pretty much range versus range. That's what you're going to get right now. And Nuero trying to figure out... Trying to juke around the obstacle, make sure that they can tell where their opponent is, because at this point, of course... We can see them. We can see where they both are. They can't. But Nuero going for... Ooh. Hammer on cooldown. And hammer miss as well. Good Thunderclap though. One more hammer. One more good hit. Although I keep saying that. And then Wintry just goes and gets some orbs. And actually, Wintry with a nice ultimate... Ow! Oh. Pulling them out of the arena into the death muck. Very close though. I mean, they were pushing Nuero down. Nuero was like 140-ish health. Got down to almost nothing. So, very good try. Because that's one and one. So at this point, Nuero probably going to continue along their more defensive path. Curious what they're going to go afterwards. Illumination for Skybrush. Totally understandable. Sunrise healing is great. And yep. Spring for shields. 
for Spring to Bash a Shield. That's all the shielding. No matter what really wants survivability, which given that they've been focused down quite a lot, and of course, their second battle the right, the electric the count well, the counter into double shield thing, or into all teammates get shield, that is awesome. Difficult to trigger, because blue team has been pretty prudent about avoiding trigger encounters. And nice use of Thunderclap to get out of counters. That's one thing to bear in mind. For people who aren't super familiar with the way the counter system works, area attacks do not trigger counters. So yeah, just projectiles and direct melee attacks, and... Ooh, nice! Ugh, that was not issue. That was kind of iffy timing from Skybrush. It worked out well for Nuero, and Skybrush once again getting focused down hard. The final Luna Strike that doesn't do anything. Wintry in a bad 1v2. Nice use of escapes there. Doesn't manage to get the center orb, though. That is critical. I mean, in a 1v2 situation, you want that center orb. That's 50 energy. That's 25 health, I think. That's at least 20 health. Normally, it's 10 and 10 per teammate, but when you're alone, it, it goes up to 25, if I'm not mistaken. And that... Ooh, a little late on the searing flight there to get out of the Thunder Stomp, and that is 2-1 to one against. I mean, at this point, we've been kind of seeing that... Really, a lot of it's coming down to blue team getting focused down. I mean, right here, we have a Skybrush getting focused... Well, even earlier, right at the beginning, we had Skybrush getting focused down, and it was just... Blue team, in general, not as confident about the center. And then later, Skybrush gets focused down hard, loses half their health, and the center orb is taken by the red team, but really, the fact that Winry was so focused on the center orb let Skybrush get all that damage, and that was it. And after that's 1v2, and, well... Of course, that ended in a rather predictable way. So, I'm curious what's going to happen in round four. I feel like round four is going to be... I also kind of wish that I wouldn't show round markers in this, because, frankly, it's spoiling the game. Kind of spoiling the game. I mean, spoiling the fact that there's more rounds. But, I'm expecting... Let's see here. We have... All right. Skybrush going for the weapon charge speed. Granted... Sirius is fourth tier battle rights, they're round four battle rights, they're not... I don't know, it's hard to choose, really, which one to go for. They're okay, but it's like bonus charge or bonus speed on charge. Like bonus charge time or bonus speed on charge. Bonus speed on charge is good. The entire point is you can rush in when you have a charged weapon. It's easier to run in with against enemies that are relatively quick. And given that we do have, I mean, spring... Like, they have Frey here springing around a lot, and that's... You know, springing a haste. Kind of want to deal with that. But at the same time, once again, we have double 1v1s. Ashka flamewalling, and that was actually Wintry's firewall there. So Wintry coming ahead in that fight. However, Skybrush forced to retreat slightly, a little bit behind. One good con one good engagement could turn it around, especially with a good charged Celestial Strike from Skybrush, but I don't see that happening. And at this point, 1v2 situation, Skybrush is going to have a very hard time getting out of this. Good counter, though. Getting to the center. Needs to get that, well, going from the meter, probably going to go for it. There's the beam. And that could be suicide. That was, but at the same time, it was suicide that was productive. It was a very productive way to commit suicide. At this point, the amount of damage that Nuero has taken is forcing them out of the fight. Even in a 1v2 situation, it's making it difficult. And another ultimate coming out here. That will, there we go. Gets rid of both of them pretty much in one quick go. Although, admittedly, Nuero with a great setup, I mean... Very good shields, avoids pretty much the entirety of the flame strike. And Wintry with one HP left. They cannot make a single mistake here. And there we go, there's the healing. Getting 30 HP instead, on top of, I mean, they got a bonus there as well. So basically, getting back up into a reasonable position and winning that match. Very clutch though, very close. Like, they needed that center orb. They got the health as well on the bottom, which is good. But they needed the center orb because had Nuero gotten the center orb, it, there would have been no question. Nuero has so much shielding going on that... I mean, granted, yes, Wintry does have shield on Searing Flight, but Nuero just has shield on everything. Had Nuero gotten the center orb, the extra health would have given all the confidence to go in and just tear apart Wintry. Because really, it's just one good hammer hit, and that's it. So last match coming in here, and... Cor oh, that truck going for a stun. The rest of them, it's pretty typical. I mean... Pure fire on that, and Ash will be recharged with sunlight, which makes sense. I mean, it's kind of safe. But at this point, Zyda taking a fair amount of damage right off the bat. Nuero and Zyda going for the center orb and taking it. So red team with a slight advantage at the start, although advantage for the center orb, but disadvantage of health, and Zyda getting hit hard. Good ultimate there from Wintry. 
dealing decent damage to Nuero, and now Zyda getting focused hard. 2v1 on Zyda here. Good Lava Strike there. Good use of the Petrify, but that's still not going to be enough. And, ooh, nice Static Hammer. And it looks like Skybrush about to go down. Once again, it's going to be a fight between Wintry and Nuero. Well, it might be a fight between Wintry and Nuero. Skybrush just getting for the center rune. That's what they want. They don't want to get into any real combat right now. And Astral Beam to win. Holy crap. That was... That was actually kind of a turnaround. I mean, really, it was just small advantage right here. Because right at the start, we have... Like, Zyda going forward. Shielding up. What happened? That was kind of weird. Because Zyda should have the same level of shielding. Oh, no. The weakening wouldn't have mattered. Oh, I see. They missed that. So they got hit. So if you look at Zyda right here. Right as the attack happens. So Zyda goes up forward. Weakened. Gets hit by Searing Flight. And then gets hit by a bunch of flame of Firebolts. So they got hit for quite a lot of just base damage. Just, just standard M1s. That's all. That did the trick. And then, of course, near the end, but once we got focused down. But yeah, that was it. Really... Just a small combo of Searing Flight and Firebolts. So that was that. And that was a much more intense match. Much much better played. And next one is going to be... Hey, another one with Dembo style. Skybrush and Dembo style. They made a good team that I saw last time. On the daytime version of the... Where are you? The daytime version of Mount Eras is the map. Which is interesting, because it's probably the least center-oriented map. Because you have all the orbs here, like the health orbs, off to the side. You don't really need to have the center control that strongly to take them. The energy orbs you need center control, but the health orbs, because of the way they're laid out, you don't really need to worry about... Actually, is this... I think this is day. So it makes it a bit easier to come back in this map. Oh, here's the last one we were on. It's... Actually, the last... Ormond Temple's not bad. Skyring is one of the most... Skyring Day is probably the most center control focused map. But not this one so much. And center control, however, is kind of going to blue team. It's still co pretty contested. Blue team trying to maintain focus here. Skybrush in a 1v1 situation with Pazuzu. Oh, I should say, yeah. Pazuzu is also playing Ashka. And Vihanas is playing Freya. So another Ashka-Freya team. Basically the same composition as last time. Different player, same composition. And Pazuzu went for Twin Hammers. That is much more typical. Going for the, all, as much incapacity chance as possible. And nice use of the counter, though. And Skybrush going down right at the start. Vahana's taking a fair amount of damage, but managing to escape basically everything. Good escape. Good steering flight against that ultimate. Good use of the Twin Hammers from Vahana's. And it looks like Red Team will probably take this. Pazuzu's Firewall in a great position. But Dembo Styles Firewall a little bit too far behind. They don't go, don't manage to get behind us down despite the one health behind us staying alive. Gotta say, that was a really good Firewall coming in from from the red team though, from Pazuzu. Pazuzu had a really nice, like that was just, that just stopped Dembo Style from doing anything. That's really what Firewall's for. I think what Pazuzu was, sorry, what Dembo Style was trying to do with their Firewall was to prevent behind us from throwing a hammer. And behind us, continue with the hammer build, the bonus damage, celestial split blinding, and of course shield on searing flight for both Ashkas, because that's what you do as Ashka, that's what Ashka does. So quickly joining the melee, Skybrush going in there, getting incapacitated out of there. No real 2v1 as a result. And Dembo style being somewhat focused down, but nice juking, getting out of the way of the hammers. This point, both teams making sure that you don't get a well, okay, actually, Dembo style starting to get a little bit focused down. More importantly, Pazuzu getting really focused down. Skybrush making sure to keep the pressure on Pazuzu. And just small amounts of damage here and there. It really is adding up for the red team. And now with Vahanas petrified out. Ooh. Dembo style hitting the petrified Vahanas. Dealt a little bit of extra damage. I mean, that was... That was Firestorm, and it is a little bit difficult to hit on an opponent for the most part. So I can kind of see hitting the petrify. Did that... That ultimate hit both? Hang on. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Nice dodge from Pazuzu there. Had to do the instant replay on that one because I was not sure what happened. And Pazuzu getting killed before getting off their ultimate. This is a convincing win for blue team. And that was basically just a matter of chipping away. 
It's chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, and then finally with the ultimates. But even when the ultimates hit, it was mostly just, like, they had 70, 80 health before they hit. Like, the red team had that, so not really working too well. The Hanas, they just got both folks down really hard, just alternating between the two. So let's see what happens this time. Red team... I feel like Vihanas needs to really prioritize incapacitating as much as possible. It's a bit tricky on this map because there's only really this one wall here, but Skybrush is conveniently close to it. So if Vihanas can get a couple hammers on those walls, that can work nicely. And there we go, Lunar Strike not hitting, so Red Team getting away from that and focusing down Dembo style hard. Nice firewall from Dembo style to avoid a real 2v1, but still taking a lot of pressure. And that counter trigger is not what wanted to happen. And now Vihanas getting hit in a 2v1 situation. Does... Oh, I think they... It's, it's really hard to tell. It's kind of hard to tell when you're count... No, it, it was definitely blue team that got that center orb. The blue flash. So yeah, that was another ultimate. Hitting behind is hard. Forcing behind is out of there. Good counter, though. Dembo style seems to hit the counters a lot. And the incapacitate... Wow, that incapacitate combo turned it around. Dembo style on the verge of death as a, as a result of the incapacitate into ultimate combo. Granted, that was without static, too, so we're not even the 60 damage, but nice Astral Beam finishing off Vihanas and Pazuzu. I think they're trying to build up to that ultimate. There is the ultimate there. Once they get the targeting right... No. Are they going to go for it? I'm not sure. I feel like they're not... At, no, I don't think they're sure they can actually pull it off. And, ooh, a little bit late. The Searing Flight finishes them off right before that ultimate can come off. Man, I noticed it's like Pazuzu clearly wanted to have that ultimate go off, but just I think they were waiting right for Blue Team to be in a nice line, which happened a couple times, but very briefly, and there was a lot of pressure, so I can totally understand. Oh yeah, also behind us going for some shielding, switching over to the shielding, because they're getting a lot of pressure, so it makes a lot of sense. And Demo Style going for more healing, Pazuzu going for more damage. And once again, Skybrush with the light speed battle, right? It makes sense when you have melee. I just feel like Skybrush is focusing so much on using Celestial Split to close the distance that it... I mean, light speed isn't a bad idea, it's just... I don't know how it'll come up. And not the best counter timing, I'm afraid. Pazuzu is still taking a lot of damage, but Vahana is able to incapacitate out Dembo style. Not turning into 2v1. Ooh, nice Storm Vault. Did not manage to hit, but that was Vahana's had the right idea. Because at this point, Red Team just needs those 1v2s. Or 2v1s, rather. They need to be focusing down. And Demo Style getting a lot of focus, but Skybrush has more damage. Actually, never mind. Demo Style taking all the damage. No ability to escape. And Vihana's nicely done. Nice. Sh well, nice jumping out of there. Getting away from the Lunar Strike, but does get hit by the ultimate. However, that ultimate does hit. And another ultimate hit on Skybrush. So Skybrush getting hit by all the ultimates. Ooh, did not make the incapacitate count. And good EX Celestial Strike takes a bit of damage, but Vahana's getting that orb and making up for all the damage, and then some. So Vahana's with a nice spring to escape that. Good counter as well on static. Oh, but the static on top of that. Oh, that would have been such a perfect... Wait, that static, that would have dealt 60 damage, wouldn't it, though? Okay, that's... What the heck? Sorry, that's weird. Because 62. Weird, that should have been 60 damage. That was very bizarre. At any rate, Luna Strike, and once again the red team takes it behind us, takes that center orb. But waiting for another ultimate. Little surprised actually. Especially there, that would have been a perfect time for a Thunder Slam. I mean, especially against Sirius, because the counters are going to be coming out, and Thunder Slam's not counterable. EX Thunderclap, for those not familiar. But yeah, that's super useful. Incapacitate into the outside, into an ultimate. Nice combo. That was perfect. That was... Like, let's just watch that again. So it was... Oops. Like, it was Celestial Split. Throws that off. Incapacitate didn't last as long as I would have expected, but still worked out. Because what path could Sirius otherwise take? Skybrush, which is a otherwise take. Celestial Spit was on cooldown, and what else are they going to do? They need to get out of there. And they... Well, they did. They just got into an ultimate. So very nice tactics by behind us there. That's how I like to see this incapacitate being used. Because that's something that... Something that Stormbolt has. Or Storm Mace, should say. That's something that Storm Mace has, is that incapacitate on static opponents if they hit a wall. That's really powerful, and you want to use that. If you don't use that, 
And that's one of the reasons Twin Hammers is also really powerful, because if you have that, you get these 2v1 situations. At this point, we have Sunlight Charges and Astral Beam and Ultimate for Healing. Which makes a lot of sense. Going for the safe options. We'll see what Red Team has once the match starts proper. And it looks like it is... Ah, screw it. Let's just start proper. So yeah. Vahana is going for the stun. And Everlasting Fire for Pazuzu as well. So both Ashka's going for the same thing, which kind of makes sense. And overall, they've pretty much matched up. There's been a couple of differences, but... Looks like Red Team going hard for the center. Sticking close. Ooh, getting triggered. That's the thing. Pazuzu keeps triggering Sky versus counters, which is not... Optimal. The Hannes's counters haven't really been working out, but Skybrush's counters have basically been triggered based any time Pazus is on the field. And okay, I guess Bash, that's kinda gonna happen. Nice of wins of Luna Strike and nice taking of the center rune. So red team against this again of the center rune. Vahana's petrification is actually making a huge difference. Pazuzu taking a lot of damage from that small 2v1. Those like tiny 2v1s that last like two seconds are a massive deal in this game. And good countering. Skybrush getting out of that bad situation because that was wasn't a terrible situation. The end cap wouldn't have lasted forever, but still, that would have been damage. And Vahana's going down. This ooh, nice ultimate onto well, I mean, it's not a Dembo style, but really Pazuzu trying to use the pure fire as much as they can. But honestly, there's not much they can do. Even 1v1 against a full health Sirius, or just about full health Sirius. That is a bit of a problem. Oh, Vahanas apparently was running into cancel on move problems. Interesting. I'm not really f sure why you'd use cancel on move. Personally, I always use cancel on a button. I mean, okay, if you play Bloodline Champions, yeah, that makes sense. You'd use cancel on move. That was how it worked. Bloodline Champions is all about cancel on move. But, I don't know. For battle right, you have the proper counts of button. Cancel on move isn't default. Apparently there's a bug involving charge abilities where you can kind of, you can juke a bit of the side before shooting them off, which hopefully will be fixed. But these games were played, I think, before that bug became public knowledge. 